Hey everybody, it's 2024. I'm Charlie. This is the Dev Environment, and this is the first video that will come out every Wednesday uh, of this year, uh, where we're gonna do just kind of learnings about React Native app development and all this stuff. If you're new to app development and React Native and Expo, that's totally okay. That's what we're here for, um, and we're here to just kind of get you going. For those of you who don't know, Expo is kind of like imagine it like Next.js with React. Uh, it's a framework, it's an SDK, um, it's an application um, that helps you build React Native apps very quickly. Um, it has its own router, so it's kind of getting more robust as the years go on. Um, and it's actually had a lot of changes this year. And so I just want to start again just with another quick getting started uh, with React Native and Expo for 2024 because things are a little different. Um, and to make it even easier for you as well, um, I've created a repository on GitHub uh, for the dev environment. I'll post it in the description below. Um, and I updated it regularly, including 27 minutes ago. Um, and so if you just clone this repository and pull it into your IDE, then you'll have something that looks a lot like this. And this is our um, just, just kind of basic application. It's only got two screens. So if I just quickly, I'll just clear out of this. Oh, and um, I'm just going to run npm run setup first. And that's going to install all the necessary dependencies to get you going. I've even cleaned up all the vulnerabilities. So if, as of the time of this recording, there's zero vulnerabilities. I, I keep regularly updating it. Um, but then you can run npm run dev. And if you run npm run dev, it's going to give you this little menu. And so this is how cool Expo is, is that number one, we have kind of this uh, QR code, which I can open my phone and scan. And then it's going to take me to just a little um, Expo router and I can just click on Expo Go. And then what's going to happen is, is it's going to open the application on my phone. And then I'll be able to, as you can see, it's loading right here. And as soon as it loads, then there's the application, just a super basic app with two screens, really easy. Um, and then also, if I press S and make sure it says using Expo Go, so you have to press S because by default, Expo now uh, switches to the development build, um, which is a compiled APK for Android or app file for iOS. And then I press I, and it's going to open up on the iOS simulator over here. Oh, I just have to press, sorry. i got to open my <laughs> iPhone first. Uh, and then it's going to open up uh, on the iOS simulator here, which is really nice. Um, so here's the app as well. And then really cool, I can press W, and it's also going to open up the app on the web browser. So now I'm running the same app on all three. So this is how easy it is to get up and running. Um, and then it's as simple as if I go into, let's say I go to the second screen here, um, and I just want to change the, uh, the title there. I'm just going to make it that, and I'm going to set it to 200 pixels. And now I have just kind of the second screen and the home screen. And then it's really cool because in real time, it's going to update on the web. And then if I tap here, now I can see it's updated on the mobile app as well in real time. So it's really great for development. Um, some really cool changes this year um, is that Expo is now a wonderful web framework as well. Um, it always was pretty good with web, but now um, not only do we have an, an option to edit all the meta tags in your SEO, um, but when you static uh, re like render the site um, statically, then it's actually going to create routes for each screen of the application. And then now when you deploy it, then it'll really help because um, before it compiled down to a single index.html uh, file. So if I go to Pazak, which is um, a site that I have, and I go to pick character, the really cool part is you can see here, oh, I can't zoom in there. <laughs> you can see here in the uh, route that now actually there's a unique route for everything, so how to play. So now I can actually reload the app right into that route, uh, which is really cool. Or I can go to character select, and now I can go directly to each page, which is really amazing. Also, it has good SEO, so as you can see here, like 
you know, I have all the meta tags, OG, like, you know, if I go into social, then we have all the open graph, um, uh, like images and everything like for sharing, uh, through Twitter and all that stuff. So it's, it's really amazing. It's really great for SEO if you're doing static rendering. Um, on the app side, uh, right now we're still on Expo 2, Expo Rudder 2, um, but it'll be uh, releasing Expo Rudder V3 very soon. So we're going to do a video on that, um, as well as the SDK version 50 is coming out very soon. It's in beta right now. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, if I just kind of go through just kind of the app uh, structure here in our package JSON, uh, we have a bunch of really nice scripts. Um, all of these are using the ELS CLI, but I'm using it locally. So um, for Android and iOS, for example, for Android, you need to make sure you have the Java SDK installed to build it there. On iOS, you need to make sure you have Xcode and Xcode tools um, to do a build. If you remove this local flag, then you can do it through um, the ELS CLI, um, but you have resource limits and, and you can't do it all, this, all the same. So I, I did it locally, so you can just build it on your local machine. Um, on the web, uh, we have a web build that's all done locally and that'll like export it out into a web build folder, um, where you can actually just upload that directly to for cell, Firebase, whatever you like to use. Um, we have a dev script that's just npm run start. And then that's the same as this expo start command. It's really straightforward. Um, Prettier is included, so we have a Prettier RC file. If you want to change any of the preferences that I've set, go for it. Um, linting, so ESLint, once again, there's an ESLint file. If you want to edit any of the rules, go for it. Totally up to you. Um, we have offline support, so this is like if you're on a somewhere without Wi-Fi, uh, you can still run this. Uh, normally, Expo needs to connect to their servers, but if you don't have Wi-Fi, you can run it offline. Um, publishing uh, to the expo and web and later on this year we're going to be talking about publishing to app stores um, i currently have uh, and like applications deployed to the google play store and doing ios like app store right now um, to serve your apps like once they're built uh, you can actually start on the dev client so this is what i was talking about earlier where um, you build down to an apk or an app file and then um, you can run it here on your simulators or on your physical device um, and to serve the web, the built web file, to see what it looks like in a production build, um, you can do it here. Um, this setup script is what you want to run first. It's going to install Expo, and then it's going to Expo install. So when you're installing dependencies in Expo, you want to Expo install, not npm install, not yarn. Um, you just want to make sure you use Expo um, because that is going to... Um, sometimes the latest version of NPM packages don't work with Expo by default. Expo kind of keeps its own record of which version of an NPM package to use. Um, we have an Expo start script. Uh, just testing is included if you run NPM run test. Um, and I have them all here in the files so you can see uh, just how to test a React Native component. Just as an example, we'll do a video on that as well. Um, Expo upgrade just helps you upgrade the SDK when version 50 is ready. I will keep updating this repo, but just in case you wanted to jump the gun. Um, and web, uh, when I can run it as localhost on port 3000, I just a little bit of a custom configuration for the web build. So if you run npm run web, um, then it'll kind of, um, yeah, it'll, it'll run on a, a more custom server than just running through the dev. Um, so yeah, the, the project structure I've moved, uh, before I had, uh, the screens and layouts and their own, um, uh, uh, folders here in the source directory. Um, but I've just put them directly into the app directory now as it seems like it's kind of best practice at this point. Um, so the index.tsx is your just index route, obviously. Um, and so that's here on this home screen. So you can just kind of like do a little bit of, of uh, editing with that. Um, and then the second route is kind of our second screen. And much like how Next.js works, uh, you can have this underscore layout.tsx. And this, uh, this is going to wrap every, um, every component in the app directory. Um, that is a child of this. So like the, at the root level, this layout.tsx is going to, is going to, 
uh, wrap everything. So for example, we have like a theme provider if you wanted to add Redux, if you wanted to add Zustand or any state management libraries, um, if you wanted to put context um, at the top level of your application, this is where to do it, just in the underscore layout.tsx. This is the very first um, file that is loaded um, when you run your application. It's kind of the, and so you're probably wondering, well, uh, you have this hook for loading cached assets. Uh, this used to be here, um, but there's a problem. And the problem is, is that um, the way that Expo Router works, where this is like, think of slot as like your router, right? Um, this, uh, if you have it loaded here and you load a loading spinner, then it kind of messes up the routing. Um, because especially if you're doing static output, um, you want to make sure that your route loads to load all the metadata and everything first. And then you can kind of go and, uh, and, and load the content onto the page. So I moved it out of the app layout and I put it into the screen layout component, which you'll notice each individual route is loaded with the screen layout. So the screen layout um, basically is just really simple. It loads either a spinner if uh, the assets are not uh, loaded in and cached, um, else it uh, will just load the children, right? So here, um, everything inside of this will load uh, when the assets are all ready to go. Um, and if they're not, it'll show a loading spinner. So if you want to see how that looks like in the use cache assets, um, I just have basic fonts right now. You can add any logic you want here. You just want to return a Boolean. So like if you want to preload images, if you want to preload audio, um, if you want to inject some HTML or whatever on web build, um, you can do that here. And we'll talk about all these things um, and how to make the web and native play well together. Uh, we, I've had some a lot of fun kind of like with Firebase because Firebase has a JS web APK and then it also has a native React Native Firebase um, and they don't play well together. So I've actually had to kind of like implement a solution that works for web and native um, for analytics and everything. But if I just set this to false, then what you're gonna know is that you're gonna see a spinner here, right? And so this font's loaded. It uh, resolves to true when the fonts are ready to go. And so they're ready here and we're good to go. So yeah, so uh, typings, I've put some typings in uh, just for a default theme, um, just with TypeScript, just kind of like loading PNG and all that stuff. Um, there's a dimensions library here. So if you want to use dynamic uh, sizing, um, you can do that. Um, dynamic sizing is uh, a little bit different in uh, React Native if you're coming from the React world or web development world at all. Um, normally you would have done kind of like media queries when you want things to adjust in size, but basically we've I've created this uh, this size function that attaches to the theme. So if you go into config and you go to theme um, and you see in the app theme here, uh, we have the size and it's using this dimensions method, which is loaded from the utils. And so uh, essentially what this does is it gets the size of the window and then returns um, uh, a more specific um, kind of result. So let me show you. So here, like on the web, it's the easiest way to show you. Um, so if I shrink the screen and then I reload, you'll see that it appropriately resizes based on the viewport. Um, and so this is really nice because it uh, is, a, it's, it's, you can't use media queries, you can't do all those things that you normally do on the web with React Native. Um, and so this is just like a really easy kind of fix uh, to make that work. And so what that means is that when you're using sizing, um, you just kind of dynamically load it. Now I'm using style components. I know some people dislike style components. Um, I know some people like uh, maybe Tailwind or there's people who are like pure CSS um, or SAS um, people. And so whatever you want to use, it's totally okay to do. Um, if in the situation where you didn't want to use, um, you maybe just want to use style sheets or something basic, um, then you can still use this size. You just would import uh, the dimensions. Um, uh, where are we? Dimensions, yeah, from the utils, and then uh, and then like you just do it in a style uh, prop um, inline. So you'd be like width, and just make it dimensions, and then like twelve pixels or whatever. 
And then so that way you can like dynamically set all these things. Um, so it still works with whatever you want. I just, um, I really encourage you to try style components. I know a lot of people hate it, but like with React Native, I found that it gives you, as you can see here, it gives you kind of the same structure you would have with style sheets, um, but it also gives you a lot more flexibility um, in terms of uh, using theming, which is super nice. Um, so if you wanted to go dark mode, light mode, you'll see that that's an option in the config here, like for the nav, uh, we have dark mode and light mode options. Um, but on top of that, it just kind of gives you a little bit more of like a CSS feel, like where I can use background color transparent instead of doing that in like camel case or whatever. It gives you like full access to um, CSS properties, but also it just kind of is really nice that you can like do some switching um, based on logic, right? Like if, if uh, I don't know if I have any here, um, but we'll do some examples a bit later on where um, you can do like, you know, um, if something is selected, change the color and make it dynamic like that. And it's really easy to do with style components as well as media queries, as well as affecting children, this kind of stuff. It's, it's all given to you there, whereas you would have a little bit more of an issue um, if you were doing it kind of using just traditional style sheets. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm really glad you stopped by. And uh, yeah, keep an eye out every Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, January the 3rd. Um, but I will keep doing these videos every Wednesday. And uh, hopefully, pretty soon, you'll be an expert at React Native and you can uh, feel comfortable building your own apps because it is a lot of fun. And Expo is a wonderful tool. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much. All the best.